Good morning, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. Uh, today is Saturday, so it's rules for success. Uh, some principles that you can take and apply to your way of thinking and to your approach and experience consistent results. Uh, these are often transferable across industries, across passions and disciplines, and it's, it's really about centering in and understanding engagement. This one is going to be specific mostly to business, but there are some things you can look at and gain some understanding from that you can sort of uh, adjust and apply to other areas of your life. Before I get started, that's going to be a preempt to that that I want to give you. That's a bonus. But I want to remind you, if you have not ordered Critical Mass, got your signed copy yet. Now's the time to do it. Not only is Critical Mass my 20th book, it's also the first book in a six book series. We are uh, weeks, uh, hopefully only two weeks away from dropping uh, the 21st book, which is the second book in the uh, personal development series. Uh, I Am. I Am focuses on the power of your self-talk, the power of your speech and how you talk. And not just verbally, audibly, and to someone else, but those internal conversations you're having with yourself and the power of the words that are in those conversations. We're talking about the ability to make declarations in your life, and some of us are declaring the wrong things and experiencing the consequences and results of it. And we're going to talk about in this book how we set up our self-talk, how we set up the right mindset to produce the right self-talk, how we engage life, period. And this is the second book. So if you haven't got Critical Mass, the first book, go ahead and order the, it's at the, the link is at the bottom of all of the content in the description box here. Uh, if you haven't pre-ordered, do that. And here's the reason why. Number one is you're gonna get the book at a substantial discount compared to the actual price after release. And you're going to get a free 30 minute session uh, with yours truly. For those who have uh, pre-ordered the book already, and you haven't had your scheduled session, uh, session uh, someone will definitely be contacting you today. I know that there were some purchases yesterday and they may not have gotten to you um, Thursday and yesterday. Uh, I know they may not have gotten to you, but we are definitely going to get all these things set up for the coming week. Uh, we try to uh, contact you the day of your purchase. Sometimes it rolls into the next day, but you will be contacted real quick, quickly to schedule your free breakthrough session. I'm having a ball with those. Uh, anyway, that's that. So now I want to, before I talk to you about, I have six unconventional approaches uh, to business growth. I want to talk to you about starting a business. Um, and then we'll move from there. Hello, Tavis. Um, I want to start to you first talk about that. Uh, when I look at the numbers, which is a part of my business, uh, those of you who follow me know that TVI is my flagship. It's the one I put the most energy in as far as my business, but it's not my only one. And we're going to tell you why in a minute um, and why I use a particular uh, model when doing business. But in doing my research to sort of understand the type of people I'm dealing with, that are coming to me either because they want to start a business, they want to improve their finance, they want to improve their marriage. I've got clients across the board. It's not all the same. Now, the vast majority of people come to me, it's about some form, in some shape, form, or fashion, it's about money. But there are people that are coming that want to enrich their lives. So I get people who want to work on their marriage, people who want to improve uh, in the academic processes, people who are going after their doctorates. I get all of this across the board, and my job is to help them enhance and enrich the process to become better, to become more focused. Because remember, what I teach is you don't get what you want. You get who you are, or better yet, you get what you're able to become. So when you have something you're going after and you haven't been able to attain it, it's not that it's unattainable, it's that you haven't become what it requires to have it, and that's your focus. You have to say, okay, this is what I want. What type of people have this? What are the common den denominators of character, of traits? You know, when you start looking at people who are successful at business, there are some things that stand out. Here are two things that I can tell you right off the bat. When you start looking at people who are successful, especially in business or in life, period, there are a couple of things that stand out. The first thing that stands out is they're well-read. 
The average person in America reads one book a year. The top 4% in performers in this country, in business and finance and situations in life like that, are avid readers. They read three to four books per month. They are almost averaging a book a week. And that's one thing. The other thing is they tend to get up earlier than most people. They start their day earlier. Then you can look at how they start their day. They take control of their day. They are in control of their personal sovereignty. They don't surrender their sovereignty in the morning. They set their state of mind. They set their emotional and spiritual states. So they start their day in control with an anticipation and an expectation. Remember, God meets us at the level of our expectations. So that's that. But in studying, you know, the numbers and looking at the numbers and seeing everything that's going on, you, you, there's a lot to, lot to unpack. And one of the things that I noticed is that 85% of people literally hate their jobs 85 percent that's a number that's been pretty consistent probably for the last 25 years and they get up every day and go that they the, the, another study that blew my mind is that something like 80 something percent of first-time heart attacks are on monday morning between 5 a.m and 12 noon the return to a stressful work week um and so you have to ask yourself some questions. If you are one of these people, not you may not be one of these people and that's fantastic. The, the goal in life is to be the best you you can be. Find that opportunity. With some people, it's going to be in a career environment, environment working with someone else. If you're in that environment that literally is funding your passion, you get to go to work every, I've seen people just get it. Happy to get up, go put in the work, and look, you can't get them out the office in the evening. Those are the people you look at and know that they're, they're not just driven, they're operating in their passion. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the person that you got to drag yourself out of bed to go do something that you've got to do for a lot longer in life in order to get by. Now, the thing is, it's slowly killing you on the inside. And I don't mean that in a a uh, metaphorical way, I mean literally when you show up every day at a job that's stressing you. And it's not just jobs, it's relationships, it's environments, but when you're in a place that's constantly having you at a level of stress, you're slowly killing yourself because that stress is releasing cortisol and adrenaline into the body. And in, 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 in prolonged uh, situations where it's constantly in your bloodstream, it's toxic. It's meant to have uh, cortisol and adrenaline are stress hormones, so chemicals that are released in the body to produce uh, a heightened sense of awareness, ability to feed the fight or flee. So you're, you're stronger, you're quicker, you're, you can move quicker and faster for a short period of time in order to either get away or to defend yourself. And then it's meant for you to come back down, your heart rate to drop and all of that. But some of us are in a constant state of stress, constant state of anxiety, and we don't know how to deal with it. And it's not just our jobs. I don't want to send that message. There's so many different things in this world, in this culture, in this society that causes people to stress out at high levels over long terms to where you're not talking about chronic stress. But what I found is there are a bunch of people that, that, that have in their heart their desire is to do something spectacular, to do something special, to uh, become everything they, they need to become in in life and enjoy life and feel fulfilled to me success is about fulfillment it's not about a dollar amount it's not about what's in your bank account it's not about how many people uh think you're the bomb uh, a lot of people get off on likes and shares uh that's not something i've done uh i'm not on social media for a popularity contest i'm on social media to put in work uh i share sometimes personal opinions uh, but I normally try to steer people towards principles and ideas that I have seen work. And I teach from principles and values that I have practiced and I've seen what they do in my life. I also bring people along on my own journey of in, in, in empowerment and becoming better because I'm on that journey. I'm on that journey every day. Uh, I, I don't pretend to have it all. I don't pretend to know it all. 
I'm just simply exercising and executing principles that I have seen proven to work in my life and in the lives of others. And I pass that on to people who are willing to listen. But I'm not here for the likes and the shares. Now, definitely that works for me because I do run uh, several businesses that operate online or at least bring in clientele through online or digital content. So absolutely, it's good, but it's not what drives me. I don't get my value from shares or likes or how many uh, subscribers I have on a platform or how many followers I have on the platform. That's not what my, my value comes from knowing my purpose. My value comes from having a clear sense of my assignment and knowing what it is I was put here on this planet to do. That alone tells me my value. I know my worth based on my purpose. And so that doesn't require anybody to validate it. And so I'm not here for validation. I'm here to put in the work. And that's part of the reason why a lot of people aren't, because they aren't putting in the work. They aren't getting the things they need to get done, done. But the, uh, for those of you who want to do something different, who want to do something better, the first step that you've got to do and what most people aren't willing to do, here we go. You've got to be willing to take a step backwards a lot of times in order to move forwards. What do I mean by that? A lot of people have gold handcuffs on. And, 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 and what I mean by that is you're strapped to a job because that job pays you the money you need to pay for all this stuff that you bought that you couldn't afford that made you feel good about yourself. The car, the, 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 the jewelry, the house, all this stuff that you need a roof over your head. You need a place comfortable. You need something to drive that you feel good about and that represents you in your field. That's important because we, whether we like it or not, image plays a role. However, how much of the stuff that you're spending on, the fact is almost 90% of the people in this country overspend on things they don't need but think make them look better in front of people they don't like. Let me say that again. The vast majority of people in this country have to stay on the job they're on because it pays them the money they need to pay off the debt they created buying stuff they don't really need to impress people they don't like. That's the gold handcuffs. That's what locks you into the rat race. You study trying to accumulate stuff to put off an image that you think is impressing people that really don't matter. There's nothing wrong with having nice things, but it, be, it should coincide with what you're producing. You should never be putting yourself, I mean, obviously there's certain things that the average person can't go out and pay cash for, that, I, that you need. If you're a person like me that lives in Houston, you need a vehicle, and you may not be able to go out and pay cash for one, but could you? Could you let the new car on the showroom go, go find you a nice car that's a one owner, and pay a lot less and then save up the cash and get, get something. You could, but I digress on that. Look, so that's the first thing. You gotta get out of the idea that, you know, the reason I have to have this job because it pays me high five figures, it pays me six figures, and that allows me to afford this car. I really look good in this car. People like me in this car. I get a lot of compliments in this car. I would rather have appreciation and gratitude coming from people uh, that are satisfied with the way that I've touched their lives than to have a million people liking me and complimenting me on the car I drive. So you've got to be able to do that. You've got to stop looking and asking for permission, and you've got to stop waiting for the right opportunity. It does not exist. The right time and the right opportunity are mental constructs. They're ideas and concepts that come from your mind. You have to get out and create the opportunity. You have to get out and be willing to put in the work. You've got to have the patience to allow the work you're putting in and the seeds you're planting to gestate. That's another big issue with people is they plant, but they don't have patience. They plant, but they can't wait for the gestation period. Some of you have some real big visions. Some of you have some huge visions and dreams, and you know me. Uh, you probably heard me quote Stephen Furtick multiple times that if the vision you have for your life isn't so huge that it intimidates you, it's a good chance it's insulting God. But with that has to come the patience to allow the planting and the cultivating and the building of what's going on. It takes time. It's the difference between the rose and the oak tree. 
So you can plant a rose and see some fruit in, in a short period of time, but when you plant an oak tree, you're planting for longevity. You're not planning for the beautiful sights you're going to see and then watch it dwindle, uh, dwindle away and have to wait for the next uh, blossoming period to see it again. You're planting something that as it grows, it provides and does more, and then it gets to full growth and it provides for a long time. See, that's the oak tree. And when you plant like that for huge visions, you've got to give the gestation period that's necessary for the vision to do what it does. We, we, we live in a world of instant gratification. If it doesn't happen now, it's not going to happen. That's why you got people quitting and starting over, quitting and starting over, quitting and starting over, because they can't wait long enough to let the gestation period take root on the seeds they planted. They leave the seeds, and then what happens? They leave the seeds or they stop nurturing the seeds, they get frustrated and the weeds come up and choke the life out of, the, uh, uh, of what's trying to sprout up. Uh, doubt negativity, toxicity, uh, fear, anxiety, uh, all of these things that ultimately end up nothing happening. And then you start to train yourself that, hey, every time I do it, nothing happens. You're self-destructing, you're self-sabotaging because you're not trusting the process associated with your purpose. God designed you with a purpose and with that purpose came uh, provision. But you gotta plant, you gotta water, you got to nurture. You got to de-weed. What, what is being, when you, when you de-weeding, you, you, you're taking out the things that will work against you. You're taking out the things that will literally suck the life out of what you're trying to do. Weeds are parasites. They're organic parasites that literally choke the life out of things that are growing, that are beautiful, that are positive. And what you have to do is you have to pull it out. Sometimes it's that person that you've been friends with for a long time and you, you don't know how to break it off with them. You've got this connection to them based on uh, based on uh, time that you've spent with them, but they're negative. They see the negative. They make it their lives, life's work to tell you how nothing's going to work. That's what they do. They are, they, they are negative in every sense of the word. You got other people that all they do is complain. If they can't complain about something, they're not happy. Professional complainers, you got to de-weed. You got to clean out your circle. You got to clean out your periphery. You got to start looking at who am I talking to on a regular basis? More importantly, check this out. Who am I le letting, who am I letting talk to me? Who's speaking into my hearing? You got to control that, but you got to take actions. Now, that's that. You got to get involved. That's the bonus. That's now let's get into it real quickly. And I'm going to move through these quickly. Six non or unconventional uh, approaches to business growth. Because see, you get into business and the ultimate goal is to grow your business and establish longevity. And there are a number of principles. I'm going to give you six that focus, that are unconventional, that you can apply this year and see results this year. Uh, number one is to focus on remaining, uh, remaining relevant Focus on remaining relevant over the long term. One of the biggest mistakes that I see are people jumping on trends, looking to get some heat that doesn't have longevity. So you always have these flash in the pans and then you're looking for the next flash in the pan. The problem with flash in the pan, uh, what I call flash in the pan f fame, is it's never gonna be the same flash. So there's no consistency. So it's hard to generate longevity. So you spend the entire life cycle of the company trying to come up with the next win just to get another group of people in and not really focusing on creating long, uh, longevity through consistency, which may not produce as much upfront but provide you with a lifetime of resources. That's the first thing, stay relevant. Uh, Never be one of the things that I, 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 I'm real big at, and, and this is one of the things that I mentioned in the beginning that I was going to share with you about how I do things is I never ever allow myself to be at the mercy of one thing, anything, I don't care what it is, and especially in business. Never be at the mercy of uh, one thing. What's, what does that mean? If you put all of your eggs in one basket, if everything is about this one business endeavor, and you even if you do great at it, what happens if something doesn't go right? For instance, a significant part of what I do in promoting my business and generating revenue for TBI and a number of other businesses, but definitely for TBI, 
is social media content primarily through video on a number of video channels. What if in the future video becomes an, an, an issue or something happens where uh, Google decides that they're going to use uh, YouTube for their own purpose in micro contenting and they knock off and say you can't use use this anymore to store your own videos because we're going to use it to promote what we're doing uh, it's a micro it's a micro uh, uh, a, a micro strategy what if they do that what if they do something like that or what if whatever uh, things change and it's no longer there and that's where all your revenue is being generated and there are people out there everything is coming from Instagram or everything is coming from uh, YouTube. It's a lot of them out there that's doing it that way. Here's the problem. Now you've got to figure something out. I believe in taking at least 20% of what you're generating and putting it into an alternative revenue source. Outside of TVI, I have Myriad Business Solution, which is a business consulting uh, firm. I have Odyssey Media Group, which is a marketing, branding, and uh, digital advertising consulting uh, firm, uh, I have done work for companies in Sydney, Australia, uh, Australia Furniture Company in Sydney. I've done uh, work for Choice, uh, First Choice Lighting uh, in the UK uh, and in a number of other places that are not in the US. And that's where Odyssey uh, Media Group International came from. So you have Odyssey Media Group, Odyssey Media Group International. I have Master Fitness 21. Uh, and these are, are things they don't produce. Any one of them doesn't produce in and of itself what is produced through TVI, but it serves as an arm that I can always choose and file back on one of those if something happens to this. You always uh, uh, have something that you can fall back on. Uh, what, what, what next did I put down? Okay, number two, adapt your leadership approach. Here's one that's definitely non-conventional. The, the conventional model for leadership is to get everybody in the organization to buy into your vision. And because they buy into it, they have a certain level of ownership in it and they will put in the work. Now there is some validity to that approach. Here's why I don't completely subscribe to it. If everybody's buying into Think about how I think, and you'll, you'll, you'll get this. If everybody's buying into the vision that I'm, I'm presenting to them, I'm not dreaming big enough. I'm not looking expanding big enough. Yes, I'm a great salesperson. Yes, I can convince people of things. But if somebody is saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold up, hold up, because I'm pulling them out of their comfort zone, I'm not, I'm not thinking big enough. I'm not pushing uh, the envelope far enough across the desk. I want to pull people out of their comfort zone. And the reason I'm pulling them out of their comfort zone is not only to build my business, it's to challenge them to be great at what they're going to be at in their own. It's always building people up to step out on their own and not just simply enrich myself. It's a store process, but it's more powerful. Why? Because you're creating allies, assets across a spectrum that you can tap into. It's the slow move, but it has longevity. And I'm telling you this from experience because I've been along the fast track too. You're, you're getting things done and you're winning, but you're moving so fast that you're not looking out for the people that you're winning with and you're leaving them behind. Okay, uh, ne the next thing you need to do is adjust your marketing strategies. This is huge. If you look at the top performing companies, and this number is growing drastically each and every day. If you look at the top performing companies, uh, around the world. They are literally flipping uh, their marketing spend, their advertising spend, uh, their branding spend, uh, and they're pushing most of it towards digital media, online media, social media marketing, digital content, and moving away from television and radio, which have been conventional and, 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 and mainstays forever. And the reason being is that everybody is consuming digital content. It's, it's less expensive and it's more powerful. Another thing you need to do is focus on, you, you hear me talk about next level living all the time and it, it, and it transcends business. It should be a, a, a goal of yours in every area of your life, next level living. You should always be looking to take your business to the next level. Here's one of the things that I've seen, the most common thing that I've seen that works against people when they're trying to take their business to the next level based on what people have brought to me. Uh, to, for help is they get to a certain level and also 
that all of a sudden try to reinvent the wheel. They, they've started their business, they've experienced a, a certain level of success, they've gone from zero employees to 50 employees, and now they're trying to grow their business and maybe reach 75 to 100 employees and maybe multiple locations, and all of a sudden they try to reinvent the wheel. And if, if what you did to get to where you're at and you are at a level of success, if it worked for you until some main swing in, in trends happens where, for instance, instance, obviously, there was a point where television advertising and radio advertising didn't have as much pull as it used to. But if that's how you got there and that hasn't changed, you don't reinvent the wheel. Matter of fact, you, 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 you invest heavier, you double down on it, you go for it stronger, you put more into it than you did. That's how you get more results. You find a way to leverage what you've already been doing so that it's, it, it, it's more power, it's more force, it, it, it's more engaged, and you get more out of it. Uh, you're going to have to have the right group around you. When you Once you get to a certain level, you can't do it all by yourself. And you start to experience these real excruciating growing pains. And then you may have all kinds of things happen in the way of struggling to keep revenue going because now you've got all these things that have to be done and you're trying to do them yourself. And so you've got stuff going into cost factors that maintain what you're doing, but don't produce the revenue. You've got to find a way to find balance in that. Uh, next, uh, business to business about digital content. If you're doing business to business, you need to learn how to master LinkedIn, period. If you're doing personal services, personal branding, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, uh, and other vision things, uh, you definitely need to sit up and work at. Speaking of personal brand, something I've already spoken on once this week, you have to build your personal brand. Your personal brand precedes any business endeavor you do. When you build your personal brand, your brand, your personal brand goes out in front of all new endeavors, all new uh, aspirations in business and anything else. When you build your personal brand, people know who they're dealing with. They know the quality of work they're going to get. Uh, whether you've just started it or you're talking about something you've been doing, once your personal brand is out there, people know what to expect from you. And they will look at something you just launched without having experienced it and be willing to experience it. It's so important to build um, uh, build brand and the way that you build that here. Here's how you build your personal brand uh, Especially when you're dealing with businesses, but dealing with whether you're dealing with other businesses or whether you're dealing with individuals Make sure that the con make sure that every piece of content that you create isn't um, Asking for a sale or trying to create a lead uh, If you notice I share a lot of content that's outside of the spectrum of TVI. Yes, I share my book links. Yes, I share uh, other things that I do, but I also share content where there's no ask. Um, you know, I'm not sitting up trying to get you to sign up or get on a emailing list or get on a call list or, 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 or have someone from the office contact you or anything like that. It's just sharing something that will enrich your life. Uh, and what, what happens is that's how you build trust. That's how you engage. That's how you develop relationships with people in your target audience. That's how they will connect with you. That's how they will begin to trust you. Uh, one of the fastest ways to turn people off is every email you send them is something where they got to buy something. Every post on everything is somewhere want to buy something. And even when you are asking, make sure it's not just the ask. And I have to watch myself with that. You know, when you just throw something and it's totally about the ask, make sure that you drop something. That's why when I do my books, I normally do an excerpt from the book that drops something. Even if they don't buy the book, they've got a little gem they can walk away with. Uh, that's where you're going to build and grow and develop trust. And trust is what solidifies relationships. And if you want to talk about business, it's the trust and relationship that you build with your customers that create the longevity in your business. See, customer acquisition is, is, is a part of business growth. It is, you have to acquire new customers in order to grow your business. But your, the longevity of your business is in maintaining and keeping customers, repeat business, customer loyalty. That's where you're gonna sustain your business. People who have a sense of loyalty to you because they feel they know you. And that is how you build. You've got to have a personal brand that people can relate to. 
that's going to be it. You know, I hope that you got something for it. I hope that you share the video. I hope that you take it. Here's the other thing that I'm going to leave you with real quick. Take the first step. It's one thing to have an idea of what you want to do. It's one thing to have this passion about what you want to do, have this belief. And, and, and if, if you don't take action on it, it starts to make you sick, right? There's something you know you should be doing that you're not doing. And you're starting to really make yourself sick because you're not doing it. And you're saying, okay, this is not the right time. I'm going to wait till the kids leave the house. I'm going to wait until this happens. I'm going to wait till I get the finances. I'm going to wait. Till... And the thing is, life happens every day. There's no day that life doesn't happen. It's always going to be something on the table that you can use as an excuse not to take action. Your job is take action. And people say, man, it's so huge. Here's the thing about a huge dream. It's huge. It's, it's supposed to be so huge that it intimidates you, right? It's supposed to be so huge that when you look at it, it creates a sense of urgency. That's why it has to be huge. If it's small, you know what you do with small things, something that you can just do anytime. You keep putting it off because you know when it absolutely has to be done, I get up and I'll do it. But when you got something so big and it's got a timeline on it and a, and a deadline on it and a goal at attached to it, that, has, that creates a sense of urgency. So now you've got to do something, but the urgency will also create fear if you don't know where to begin. I tip up you all the time break down the once you've created the big vision break it down one step i tell you all the time if you're starting a business before you start writing and doing all the other stuff you have to do you know about business plans and marketing strategies and marketing analysis and all that fun stuff that my company actually does for people um myriad business uh solutions actually does for people uh before you get to all of that Go get your DBA. Go get your DBA. In most states, it's under $20. I mean, in most counties, it's under $20. You go down, make sure that you've got multiple uh, selections for the name of your company in case someone already has it. Um, and you go down, you get it. And then you get, uh, the second thing you do is you contact the IRS and you get an EIN number which is your employee identification number. That's how the company is gonna be identified tax-wise. And then the next step, sit down and talk with a uh, CPA or, or a tax attorney and just determine if it's necessary to uh, incorporate your company. I believe that everybody should at least have uh, an LLC, a li limited liability company, so that you're separating your liabilities from your person, your business liabilities from your personal liabilities, and people can't come out in a sole proprietorship. Uh, one of the biggest benefits of moving from a sole proprietorship to an LLC is that if something goes on with your business and someone wants to sue you, they can't go after your personal assets because it's simply in that when a sole proprietorship, you're connected all the way around and you, you're one entity and they can come after the business and you. And so that's something that you have to really think about. And you can go with an LLC, you can go with an S corp, you can go with a C corp and they all have different benefits. You can also start a business, especially if you're going to be taking in funding, uh, uh, whether it's private, especially private funding, you can start what's known as an unincorporated uh, an unincorporated business trust, also known as a Massachusetts trust. And this allows you to also create tax shelters uh, and reduce tax liabilities and, and, and have access to the funds and be able to do things. And it, it, it works, it actually reduces tax liability better than a C Corp. And so all of these things are out there and you just take one step at a time and you build. And when you don't know something, find the person who does know it and get the expertise you need from them and keep moving. It's a one step by step process. You're not gonna do it overnight. You're not going to do it overnight. You're not gonna build it, you're not gonna establish it and build overnight. Your goal is to take the first step. And if you take a step every day, you're gonna look up a year from now and you're gonna be amazed at how much you've gotten done. But if you allow it to overwhelm you, you're not gonna take any steps and you're gonna be where you started a year from now. Just take the first step. Don't worry about what you see because see, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things what? Not seen. What you see can't compare to what you believe, what you speak, what you declare, what you move towards. You have to learn that, you have to realize that, that faith transcends facts.
people get mad at me when I say that, but hey, that's what it means. See, what I see is there, and it becomes as much of my reality as I allow it to. And people tell me I'm in denial. No, I just refuse to accept it. I refuse to accept anything that works against me. The mind of God is not subject to obstacles and undesirable circumstances. It is not subject to it. So if I'm operating from the mind of God, I am not subject to obstacles and undesirable circumstances. All right, when I get this, I'm out of here. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm about to jump out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. I've got a lot to do. I'm going to try to get back to you. If you haven't gotten the book, get the book, both of them. Uh, if you want to work with me, the email to work with me is in there. Email uh, the support team. They're going to tell you what you need to do. Uh, and if you're okay with that, we can get you set up and I'm ready to get started. Uh, and we'll move with that. But whatever you do, make a decision that you're going to be better tomorrow than you are today. And as I always say, I am going to live my life each and every day on full. I go to bed empty. And I go to bed empty because if something were to happen to me and I don't wake up, I left it all on the field. That's how you got to live. Live your life because every second is given to you for a purpose. It's not meant to be wasted. There's no such thing as casual time, empty time. Everything has something that you could be doing. You could be picking up the phone and calling somebody. I saw something this week that uh, really moves me. I know that I, 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 I talk about my wife a lot. Uh, so I'm gonna give her a pass because she, you know, she's not a person that you know actually thrives to be out front. She says what she has to say, she does, she does what she has to do. But I'm 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 about, about big upping. Uh, people that I love and I care about and celebrating them because life is short. But I saw some things somebody else did this week that totally moved me. I followed it. Uh, a person online, I'm not going to say any names, even though, uh, you know, it's been on the news and everything else. They saw a handicapped person, um, uh, excuse me, an elderly homeless person, uh, you know, with some dogs just trying to make it found out that literally he was he was getting a government check for around seven hundred dollars and some guy was literally charging him six hundred dollars a month to live in his backyard shed literally taking six hundred dollars out of seven hundred to let him live in a shed well first of all that's been taken care of that's been reported and so that's being dealt with uh because that's you know uh, illegal for a number of different health reasons uh but they got together got this man a real place got him clothes, got him set up in an actual uh, dignified living space and come to find out that the personality is coming out and just watching a person be that committed uh, is inspiring. That's what I mean by filling your space. There wasn't any compensation that came with that, but the sense of fulfillment of knowing you changed somebody's life is far more greater. And ultimately, because you put that out there, Compensation will come from other ways. It's not always the way you put in work that the money comes, uh, but, but the, the fulfillment is what you're looking for. Most people, I tell you, I know a lot of people who have a lot of money that will tell you they're not successful because they're miserable. Nothing wrong with having a lot of money. They ain't gonna ever get me to say that. But if that's all you're chasing, you'll find that you'll get it because if you're chasing it and you're putting in the work and you're doing what you're supposed to do, it's coming. It's that simple. But if that's all you're chasing, you're going to be empty on the inside. You're going to be miserable. I can attest to that personally. But when you start touching lives outside of yourself, when it becomes bigger than you and you start reaching out to say, what can I do for you? No, no, no. I know you don't have it. Don't worry about it. What can I do for you? You know, and, and like I say, with, with Marion, when I look at her and I see her do things in which not only does she not get compensated for it, she ends up having to spend in order to do it, but see the smile and the joy on her face. You know, I, I, I'm Mr. Protector. So it's a lot of them like, no, you're not doing it. But then when I see it on her face, I'm like, just sit your behind down somewhere and just hit the background and let her do her. Because see, at the end of the day, she has to be accountable to the creator for what she did with what he gave her. I can't get in the way of that. 
You know, and just thinking about it just gets me in a place. It's so much that needs to be done. We look at people struggling and talk about them instead of reaching down and helping them. That's what's got to change. You can't beat the fulfillment of touching a life. That's my challenge to you. Y'all have a great day.